and welcome to Games Master, where even a former Olympic gold medal swimmer like myself needs a bit of extra buoyancy. The reason the girls are blowing up my water wings is, as the star of the show, I can't be seen to blow myself. Later on in the show, we have God's Hollyoaks heartthrob Paul Lation as our special guest. Uh, you can stop blowing now, girls. Uh, who's your favourite heartthrob? Um, mine's Cliff Richard for the wonderful example he sets to young children. Hmm, Kirk Cobain for exactly the same reason. Okay, um, uh, we will be uh, soaping it up with some top teen soap star action later on, but now let's lather up for today's news. <laughs> it seems our old friend Sonic has succumbed to the present climate of moral decay. His latest outing, the arcade titled Sonic Championship, finds him beating up his old pals in a frenzy of pent-up teen rage. On secret test at the moment, the game features a variety of special moves including Sonic's classic spinball. Sonic's school teachers are so appalled, they've shut down his school. Universal Studios Florida just announced their biggest money spinner of the summer has been the newly installed Terminator attraction. Directed by James Cameron and featuring all the stars from the original film, the 3D extravaganza has the honour of being minute for minute the most expensive piece of celluloid since that dodgy film I made with the donkey. Hey, Puckethead! Regular viewers, and I know of at least three, will remember our feature on retro games a couple of weeks back. Well, now it seems the arcade classic Pac-Man is due for a comeback, but this time in virtual reality. VR Pac-Man is due in arcades sometime soon, and like most virtual reality rides, apart from the fact it costs a fortune, you can't see where you're going and makes you feel sick, looks brilliant. Well, there you go, up to the minute news, plus... A humorous voiceover at no extra charge. It's incredible to think this channel doesn't even make you pay a license fee. Now it's time for today's event and we are calling it I Have Violence, I Am Happy. Like Doom before it, Quake is famous for its super fast gameplay and ultra violence. Also like Doom, Quake enthusiasts have been creating their own custom additions to the game and posting them on the internet. Nice efforts include this banana skin weapon, which encourages some slapstick action in deathmatch mode. The grappling hook patch allows you to hoist yourself up to the roof and take your enemies from a more relaxed vantage. Or even this spaceship patch, more down the opposition from the comfort of your cockpit, like in the Gulf War. As we speak, in countless bedrooms across the nation, young people are busy coming up with novel ways of customising the game. Some, like Michael Mad Dog Clark, use software downloaded from the internet to create their own custom levels. Michael designs deathmatch levels, which he then plays against his next door neighbour, thanks to a little wire that connects the PCs in their two bedrooms. Indeed, Michael's formidable level designing skills and nice line and bribes make him the perfect candidate to take part in today's event. For this challenge, I've enlisted the help of young Michael Clark, who's used his level designing skills to prepare an especially fiendish scenario to test our player's ability. Quite simply, my contestant must get to the level and reach the exit before the demonic denizens make a meal of him. If he does, he learns roasting. If not, it seems only fair that Michael and the author of his demise should take the prize instead. So, wandering around in the dark with the whole world trying to kill them in a thinly veiled metaphor of my life, please welcome David Michael McCandless and Michael Clark. Hello. Hello, Michael. Okay, now. Mike, are you, uh, we saw you on last series yeah. in a feature out of the, uh, the World Doom Championships yes, in Seattle. That's right. It's not unfair to say you're probably the best Doom player in Britain. Absolutely. Uh, are you as good on Quake? Absolutely. There is no one who can even touch you? Nobody. At all. Michael, you think you've designed something which might test Mike a little bit? Uh, yeah, actually I think it'll test him quite a bit. Uh, he's got loads of monsters, we're talking big monsters. We've got traps and he hasn't got no chance. Uh, right, okay, Michael, you're going to come with me to the commentary box. Mike, you're going to get in the games play position, and we will get this quick thing rolling. Welcome to the Games Master commentary position, Mr. Michael Park. Okay, Michael, this fiendishly designed level uh, that you've set for Maka, 
Tell us what problems he's going to have in the first room. Well, in the first room, you're going to be coming across about five or six grunts, and these are guys with shotguns, and, you know, they like to take people's arms off. Okay. You've got another ogre in there as well who shoots grenades, and he's pretty dangerous too. Okay, can you not just talk to these people and try and understand them? We can, but they'll probably blow your head off. Okay. <laughs> Right, so just to reiterate the challenge, Maka has to get all the way through Michael's fiendishly designed special Games Master level with at least one little smidgen of his energy intact. Best of luck, Maka. Off you go. Okay, off Maka goes in the bottom centre of the screen. That's his energy. It's at 99 just now. I'll explain the other ones after. Okay, we've got all sorts of mayhem there. He's got a double barrel shotgun just now. Well, no, what's this he's got now? What's this weapon, Maka? That's a rocket launcher and that'll just blow anyone apart. So. Okay, then he's going to block grunts and everything. He's switched back to the right. switching between the two. Why is that? Well, some monsters are more effective when you shoot different sort of people. Okay, he's just picked up the nail gun and gone into the lift. While he's there, let's take a quick look at the next room that Michael has designed. Now, Michael, what are we going to see in this one? Well, in here, you've got these demons. They've got two big tentacles and they just rip you apart. There's also about five grunts as well, you know, as we explained in the previous room. I, I would expect no less, Michael. Um, okay, then, let's have a look. Mike is just entering the room then. He's out the lift. That's it now. Oh, we've got this little games master written in there now. Here's the grunts first of all. Where's that demon? He's, he's just behind him. There. Oh yeah, that's the kind of demon scabby looking guy. Yeah. Right, what's the best way to take him out then? A uh, double barrel shotgun. Which in fact he's done. And that, indeed that's all the grunts gone as well. He's just picking up some extra ammunition. Is that all the baddies in this room? Yeah, unfortunately. But, what's that? Mm. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a locked door. It's a locked door situation. He can't get out. What's he got to do? Press the switch. The barrier is open. The switch is pressed, the barrier is open, and Mike is going through into the next section here. What are we going to see in here, Michael? A falling roof, and it is. Oh. Oh, you is a bit annoyed there, Michael. He thought that was going to crush the max stone, but he manages to evade the falling roof. Okay, he's just taking out the dog now. He's pausing on the edge of the water. Now, what difference is the water going to make to it? It's things like health now. Is it going to be more difficult? Well, he can drown under there, which is obviously a problem. <laughs> generally, generally, not something you'd like to advise. Okay, he's picking up some energy now. That means his energy is back to full strength now, but there's a couple of bad guys up there, but he's managed to clear them. He appears to be making short work of this, Michael. Um, you've got one more kind of final big section. Let's take a look at it. What is going to be in this room? Well, there's more and more grunts, obviously, and there'll be some shotguns and they'll blast you. But there's also a couple of demons and death knights in there, and they're nasty. So, so. you ho are hoping this is going to be where Micah meets his match? Yeah. And I'm not going to try to say that again quickly. Okay, then, if we look and we see that Micah's just in this final room, these are the grunts there. And oh, he's, he's, he's tanking out. This is no problem at all for Michael. Energy wise, 71. He's doing all right, Michael. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. Yes, and the Michael's level comes crashing. There's a demon though. The demon might take some of him, but he's dispatched the demon there. And he's back to 100 health. He's picking up things that very good for Micah. I hope you've made this next bit very tough, Michael. It is. Hopefully, this should do. Okay, then we just take a part or taking it away some more grunts. He's still on 100 there. He runs behind it. He's trying to find his way out of the level, remember? And looking for an exit as well as dispatching all these denizens of netherworldly places. 88. His energy has gone down to now, and oh my god, tell us what's happening on the screen, we've got all kinds of stuff playing out there. Yeah, Michael. there's grunts, there's dogs, there's enforcers, and well, he's just getting pummeled. And his energy slipped down to 43, 43 bits of energy left. I wouldn't imagine Michael will have left too many uh, power-ups now, but that's a big old gun there. Yeah, and that's just going to literally take them apart, unfortunately. Okay, he's on 35 now, his energy is very low, we still haven't found the exit. He's gone back to this weird looking gun, what is that, Michael? It's the lightning gun, and it... That should shoot lightning, obviously. Yeah, well, it does exactly what it says on the it tin. It does. <laughs> Down to 19 now, this energy has plummeted now. Maybe Maka has made his match. No, but there was a power up there. There was some energy. He's back up to 44. That'll let him breathe a little bit extra there. He still can't find this thing. He's dropped there. Where's he going? What's he doing, Michael? He's going spiralling up and up, but he's just falling down. So hopefully he'll stay down. Okay, so is the exit right at the top of the game there, Michael? Yeah. Okay, that's it, but it just got dispatched. What's that guy? That's the Death Knight I was talking about. Right, and uh, he looks particularly vicious there. He's down to 39 energy, but he's dispatched the Death Knight. Is this another one or what's that? That's an ogre. And it's, it's also grenade. dead now. He's got 39. Right. Is that it? That's it! He's there with 39 bits of energy left. Back and touch Michael Gerald!
Well, Mike, it didn't seem to be a huge amount of problems there. You finished on uh, on 39. What were some of the difficult bits in it for you? Well, the boy Wonder had a, uh, planned a little bit of jip for me there. I came around a corner down into a courtyard and there were some demons floating about there, which gave me a bit of hassle. But apart from that, no problem. Well, so you, you played a lot of these uh, the, the made-up levels on Quake. How does yeah. this compare to some of, some of the ones you Well, played? I must admit, you know, as much as as much as I hate Michael, uh, that his <laughs> his level was, you know, very good. Very uh -huh. good example of what you can do with Quake, basically. Okay, um, Michael, having seen Michael play, is there anything you would have changed in that level now? He was good, I must admit. But I could have put some harder monsters in, right. maybe a couple more traps and that. That would have caught him out. Uh -huh. And you could, could have worn a better shirt as well. Thank you. Appearance on the show. So could he, okay. maybe as well. Yes, but unfortunately, nothing can be criticised about my clothing. Okay then, now, thanks so much for designing the level. Thank you very much, Michael, for seeing you again on the my show. My pleasure. And the guest master golden joystick goes to David Michael McCandless. <laughs> Okay, as well as being the most innovative comedy show on television, technically we are supposed to feature video games, and today is no exception as we quite literally review the hell out of a couple of the blighters. First up, for people who are too sad to fancy real ladies, they can now ogle the cynically large-breasted Lara Croft in Tomb Raider. The programmers themselves have made the lead character extraordinarily versatile. She can jump, she can flip sideways, she can roll along the ground, she can do everything. She can even swim when you come to the water sections. Along the way she'll come across puzzles and uh, the odd bat or two, which she'll have to shoot and get through in true Indiana Jones style. Tomb Raider's 3D graphics are excellent, especially considering that they're only on a 32-bit machine and they stand up really well next to Super Mario 64. The controls are slightly slow. Uh, like Prince of Persia, pressing a button, waiting a little while before the move actually happens. But the plot with all the rendered sequences gets you in and it's a solid, good game. In Street Racer, you can commit hardcore acts of road rage without any fear of getting hauled over by the fuzz. <laughs> if only life were that simple. Okay. So Street Racer is pretty much Mario Kart, but there's no competition on the Saturn. There is no Mario Kart style of game, and Street Racer will have it all to itself. The 3D angles and the zoom out options only enhance what was already a very, very good game. There's also an eight player simultaneous split screen mode, which is the first time we've seen anything like this tried in a racing game. It's a bit difficult to see where you're going, but it's good for a laugh if you've got that many friends. The playability itself subscribes to the adage that if it ain't broken, you yeah, don't fix it. Good, clean fun and more detail on these games are yours by visiting our webpage and we've even put some quick patches on there too. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. Okay, we're going to go to a commercial break now. Coming up in part two, Paul Nation, the top Hollyoaks heartthrobber, will be on the show doing a challenge. But more importantly, I'm going to try and find out just how much money the cheeky little monkey earns. <laughs> Welcome back to Games Master in the commercial bit that you've seen a lot of adverts. What you don't know is one of them was a total lie. I'll leave you to think about exactly which one it was as we go to today's celebrity challenge. I've never been to New York City myself, but with all that crime and depravity, it certainly sounds like a wonderful spot for a holiday. My next contestant will be paying it a visit in the form of the PlayStation's Die Hard trilogy. Positioned behind the wheel of one of the city's infamous checkered cabs, the player must race around, attempting to defuse four bombs before they explode. Time is of the essence, so I would advise my contestant to avoid wasting valuable seconds in the needless slaughter of pedestrians. Okay, so in a fine piece of television symbiosis, our special guest tonight is the bloke you can see straight after us on Channel 4. No, it's not the guy who says, next time you're a roof leaks, don't say I didn't warn you. It is Paul Lation from Hollyoaks. Yeah. 
Welcome to the show, Paul. Right, mate. I'm sure it's an honour uh, for you to meet me. It is. It's an honour to be here. Okay, Paul, uh, you're on two nights a week now. Yeah. Paul, so presumably you get, are you getting twice as much money now? <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose we are getting twice as much money, yeah. How much, uh, I mean, you know, putting humour aside for, for one second oh, on the show, obviously. how much exactly do you earn? How much do I earn? Yeah. Are you just asking me how much I earn? Uh, I think so, unless I've gone mad. Um, about six to nine grand a week. Six to nine, eight. so yeah. it's considerably less than I get. Oh, just in the Hollyoaks, sure. though. Just right. in the Hollyoaks. Okay. Oh, because I've got my sideline jobs. Yeah, you do DJing, don't you? I do, yeah. Have you got a special DJ name? <laughs> uh, DJ Success. DJ Success. <laughs> was, that the, was that your first kind of attempt at a name, or did you come up with a... You know, uh, I was DJ Was Puff that the best one? I was DJ Puffin. DJ um, Puffin? Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, <laughs> DJ Goose. Um, <laughs> But no. <laughs> There's an animal theme running through. <laughs> there was an animal theme. And then yeah. you came with success. <laughs> yeah. Which isn't technically an animal. Well, no, 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 but successful success. Uh huh. Okay, Paul, uh, if you would like to assume a game's playing position over there, mate. Oh, up my old diamond. I will uh, go up to the recovery position. And sitting next to me in my own personal commentary cab is Rick Henderson. Rick, cab drivers are good or a bad thing? Well, my uncle's a cab driver, so they're definitely a bad thing. Uh -huh. he's, a, he's a complete lunatic, uh -huh. and he's crashed into about 500 cars. 500? Yeah, 500 cars. And exactly. Some cars. Okay. <laughs> right, Rick, have you got any tips for Paul on this? Yep, certainly. Well, he's in a yellow taxi, so it's crashing to everything time. I like your uncle. With the, <laughs> with the three yeah. bombs. Listen to us. There is a red arrow up in the top corner, which will show him where the next bomb will be. So he's got to listen to us and take the right corners at the right times. So Paul has to whiz around the streets of New York and successfully blow up four bombs before they cause widespread damage. Uh, best of luck, Paul. Your challenge begins now. In the top left-hand corner of the screen, you can see a compass. That's the red arrow is pointing to where the first bomb is. It should be straight in front of him now. There it is, the red target shows it. Kaboom! That's the first bomb successfully taken out there. The timer in the bottom left-hand corner is ticking away to when the second one's going to explode. When the hand gets to 12 right at the top of the screen, then it will go bang. Rick has got a good start from him. He's got a good start and he's managing to pick up the bonuses. He's getting fire coming out his tyres there. That's the turbo mode. That's the turbo mode. He needs to use that a lot and pick up extra turbo to get around this course faster. Okay, does he want to be knocking into a lot of police cars? He's going no. to the park! He went into the park and took out someone in a red jumper. Uh, okay, it's uh, right, all right, you can see the red arrow, it's straight in front of him, the next bomb should be dead ahead. Quite literally at 12 o'clock. The time is ticking away though, though it's getting closer, closer to 12. He needs to find this bomb soon, Rick. He should really turbo here. He's there it is, that's it. He got the second one that was lucky because the time was ticking away. Okay, then we can see the little red arrow is now straight. Well, it was straight ahead of him. Now it's going to easterly direction. That's it. It should be. Oh, that's it. He's missed the, He's missed the turbo, but he's got the time bonus. At least he's got the extra time. Okay, uh, let's look at the time now. At this point, you can see the clock's ticking down to almost one o'clock. Man, when it gets to twelve, it all goes bang. He took out another pedestrian there, and I just think that's a personal thing of his, really. There. Okay, now it's straight ahead. The bomb straight away, but it's getting close to twelve. But it's right in front of me. Might be like this. Get it to time. Yes. Just before I got a 12, that's the third bomb successfully taken out and the only damage done to the cities of New York has actually been by Paul's taxi <laughs> so far. And then, as if oh. carefully on cue there, he takes out some more. Now we've got one final bomb, the time is ticking away. It's in a kind of easterly direction. He wants to make it north as he's done. I think it could be straight ahead, but we've got to watch that time. Uh, right there's the last the one. Is he going to get in the time? Yes! It's in the terrible field. Paul is in. Thanks for four bombs, completes the challenge successfully! Congratulations, Paul. Thank you very much. It wasn't easy. Well, um, no, the last two bombs especially were uh, very, very close to exploding there. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I had to negotiate those corners and it was just, like, very, very difficult at the last two. Was there any similarities you saw between that game and Hollyoaks? Kurt does drive a fast car away from policemen, so uh, uh -huh. I, yeah, I could see him running over a few people and <laughs> smashing up a few cars. And in a lot of ways, Paul, Life is just like looking for that next unexploded bomb. It's also like a bowl of cherries, Dominic. Is it? Yeah. But where's your stock? <laughs> where's uh, my joystick? Right, <laughs> well, a very good question, Paul. Your joystick is just about to arrive. We could um, wax lyrical about cliches about life for uh, a long time yet, but that would be an entirely different show, probably late at night on BBC Two. <laughs> could trash it, though. It is time to award the Games Master Golden Joystick to tonight's special guest, Mr. Paul Lation. <laughs> Well, Fat Freddy Features is fairly flipping my fingers off with an uncontrollable desire to make his presence felt once more. 
Let's sit back and watch his performance. Being the undisputed heavyweight king of video games, I've come up with a few ideas of my own over the years, but I can't program. This is why I've mountain biked over to Tokyo to a special school that will teach me how to turn what's in there into buck-munching money spinners. In the West, game programming seems to be something you just fall into, but in Japan, they take it a lot more seriously. The human school is just one of a number of establishments designed to turn ordinary Japanese civilians into video game giants. Dominic Diamond. Hi. Kuroyanagi-san. My Japanese is a bit rusty, so I chummed up with a bloke called Kurihari-kun, following a principle that stood me in good stead throughout my life. Of course, the best way to get ahead of school is crib off someone else. Uh, Kurihari-kun, what are you doing just now, mate? So he's basically looking at a pair of ladies' legs. Polygons are the foundation of most modern game graphics, and human students spend quite literally a very long time learning how to construct convincing polygon images. Like this final level boss from Mortal Kombat 5. Okay, it's going very well. Um, look down here, this is Dom's new game. This is the work I've done in it so far this morning, it's the basic plan of the game. And up here on the screen you can see I'm rotating some polygons around, it's all going swimmingly, but I'm a little bit hungry now, so I think it's time for lunch. Uh, some lunch there, guys. I'm sorry, uh, this is absolutely disgusting. I barely recovered from my lunch before I was subjected to the nightmare of double gameplay theory, in which students are initiated into the intricacies of just why some games are so much more playable than others. It made my head hurt, so I legged it. Not surprisingly, this is the sound design room. Uh, fairly funky guys in here. What they're being taught at the moment is how to uh, add sounds to animation. This guy here has got a bouncing ball and uh, he's trying to get the kind of sound in the right timing. Okay, at the end of the second year, these students have to come up with a game as a project. This is the one which won a prize, won the prize last year. It's good, for two years it's, uh, it's not bad. I was lying, it was cack. Human has published games produced by the school, not just bizarre role-playing games, but things like The Fireman on the Super NES, which sold 400 times more units than Mario World. 80% of people who are at the school will go straight into jobs as programmers. Very good percentage of that. All the big video games companies advertise here. We've got uh, that's, uh, Konami up here, Nintendo, and uh, Capcom over here. And uh, this is a good one here. Uh, Scotsman needed. Must be bald, yet strangely attractive and very amusing to do no work for Macho Yeno. So I'm sorted for a job as well. Four o'clock arrived and it was time for home. Unfortunately, though I'd been a disruptive influence, breaking wind at will, I was made to stay behind for some emergency coaching. See hey you guys. So I've got to do a little bit more work on my game, but I can let you have a sneak peek at just how brilliant it is. Okay, this is the playing area like that, a grid. One person gets these wee guys, another person gets the other one. You put them on the grid in turn, and the object is whoever can get three in a row, first of all, wins. It's simple, but it might just work. That's it for today. On next week's show, we have that great bender of the mind, Yuri Geller. And I leave you with this question. If Chris Evans fell over when there was no one around to hear him cry, would he make a sound? Good night. Look, it's the website address there at the bottom.